All right, well, welcome everybody. My name is Amy Vaughn, and I am joined by Jill Maraza, who is the Vice President of Business Expansion and Growth at the Economic Development Council of St. Lucie County. We're here, and our this is our first installment of Jot This Down with Jill. So we're hoping to share some really good information for you and keep this going. And I would think, you know, Jill, and I don't know if you agree with me, but I think the last thing we need to talk about is the negative sort of news about COVID-19. So maybe we can share some good news that's, um, that's out there, specifically with, I would say, training grants, or I should say any kind of grants that manufacturers might be missing out on. So Jill, what would you say the, is the biggest thing that these manufacturers might be missing? So what we're hearing currently um, with the pandemic and through the pandemic over the last couple of months is workforce. Um, different workforce issues relating to folks needing to take time off, whether they have been um, in contact with COVID or the need to stay home uh, with their child uh, for childcare purposes, um, and just the ebb and flows of folks coming in or not being in the workplace. And so that's been the biggest thing that we've heard across the board in different manufacturing um, disciplines. So let's talk about this IWT grant, because I think this is something that I was interested in and really kind of wanted to know a little bit more about. I didn't know that this existed. So I'm gonna share um, sort of the points about this for our audience and maybe you can talk us through them. So looks like we've got training, some information about the grant and the process. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, the Incumbent Worker Training Grant is a grant through the state of Florida, and it offers um, training reimbursement of expenses for existing employee skills enhancement. So one of the greatest um, elements of this grant is that you have a wide variety of training that you can have offset with this grant for your employees to help them skill build and the training one is cross training um, we're finding that that's one of the most important needs of manufacturers uh, specifically in this pandemic as employees are um, out of work for for the different reasons we talked about um, when production slows down because you know half of the team may not be in um, or they have a need for uh, additional folks in the process line to move a product forward um, the cross training element and interdepartmental training is really a perfect use of this grant um, additionally for folks that are uh, working remote and the need to enhance their skill sets and technology and the ability to keep connected through new technologies in the remote workplace. Software training is also a reimbursable expense. Um, as you're seeing the need for stronger supervisory and leadership through this COVID and um, the, the changes of how we do business, um, those trainings are also um, included as eligible trainings. Um, another great feature of this uh, program is its company preference. So companies can train their employees uh, internally uh, through uh, a specialist that's an employee that may have a very strong skill set, or they can use an external trainer. They can also do training on site. Uh, they can do training off site or in, in the new model where most things are going virtual. Uh, they can do virtual training. And the, um, the training is for existing employees that have been at the company for six months or greater. That is certainly important. I, I, um, I can't stress enough how much, you know, especially in this environment when everything has gone virtual that I think continuing training or new training or virtual training <laughs> is very needed, especially in, in this industry and, and many others. But um, what about the process? So talk to me about how this grant, uh, how it works and who, who does it. So the grant offers two levels of reimbursement. Uh, if you have less than 50 employees, you get reimbursed 75% of the grant. 
if you have more than 50 employees, you get re reimbursed 50%. So for instance, an example is if you, you had a training need and that training need was $1,000, if you had greater than 50 employees, you would be reimbursed $500 of that training cost. The maximum amount uh, for a company is $200,000. So this grant does offer an extensive amount of opportunity for a company to take advantage from anything to a small training, one, one type of program, to a very large training or, or variable training program that they like to incorporate into their business. It's a one-year grant. So you do um, apply for the grant and you need to use those funds for the training throughout the one year period. They don't hold you to the date uh, in which you're going to train or the month, but just that it's used throughout the year as it's indicated in the grant. And the training expenses that are uh, allowable for reimbursement is basically you're getting reimbursed the cost of the training. So if you are using um, a manager who is um, proficient in boat production, let's say, uh, that reimbursable cost would be $35 per hour of their hourly salary, salary as their training. And if you use an external trainer, for instance, if you're using a, a Indian River State College or some other external provider that offers training services, that external hourly rate is $200 per hour. Uh, it also does include any materials uh, and curriculum development costs that would be needed for uh, offering of the training. Um, you talked about process. The EDC is, is really happy to offer manufacturers this grant process at no cost. So the EDC prepares the grant for the manufacturers. Um, there's no cost to write the grant. There's no cost to submit the grant. And there's no fee after the grant is submitted. Every dollar um, of the reimbursement that's awarded through the state for the company is the company's dollar. We do this as a service as at the EDC. Um, and the process I've noted here on the slide, as you'll see, we identify the training needs for a company. We help you identify uh, those different types of needs through, like we talked about earlier, whether it's cross training or software, administrative, supervisory, leadership, or just industry specific. We help you identify those training programs and providers. Uh, you may want to use a provider specific to your industry. We may be able to work with you and, and help bid that out. You may want to use someone local, like our local college or other providers uh, that offer the service, the training you need. We help you identify your budget. Make sure that you have the cash flow to support um, the budget for the grant because it is reimbursable. So you have to pay for the training each month and then you get it reimbursed with a submission monthly. We prepare the full grant application for you. We submit it to the state for you. Um, there's an approximate 30 day turnaround time for the grant award. And then training can commence upon that approval. And we're here to support you throughout that grant process and with the monthly reporting, which is a simplistic Excel uh, spreadsheet, if you will. That's kind of the easiest way to explain the monthly reimbursement reporting. So this is, you get almost, well, the maximum amount of $200,000 for a, ter a term of one year, and the EDC is gonna do all of the legwork for you. Am I hearing that right? <laughs> you are hearing that right. <laughs> That's correct. That's, we're a, a service-oriented uh, organization, and we love our manufacturers, and so we're, we're happy to, to help our manufacturers however we can. And we feel well, it's that a major, this is a really major great. driver here in, uh, in the Treasure Coast, our, our manufacturers, and. I'll get to you know how important they are in a minute, but um, Jill, what about how about your talent pipeline? Like, let's just say we've got some manufacturers out there that are that have positions to fill. Um, I'm going to stop sharing, but what what are we doing as far as keeping the talent pipeline full? So we have a couple of partners. And we're working in this new market to, to get people back to work. We have a very high unemployment currently in the marketplace. And so we have partners at Career Source Research Coast, uh, the reemployment arm for the state, and we work with them uh, to help offer job fairs, to help offer on the job training grants. Um, and they also will have uh, some additional funding through, the, uh, through internship programs and apprenticeship programs. We work with our local college, Indian River State College, and their career and uh, technical 
uh, programs and CCTI. And they also can customize programming uh, that a company may need, whether it's uh, industry specific or whether it's leadership managerial. They have virtual programming, uh, an array of different types of programming through the college that's offered online. So people can um, enhance their skills at their time that works for them. So it's not always in the workplace, it may be off hours. And then we're also working with our school district. We, we have a very great partnership with our school district, their career and technical uh, education. We are trying to really build our high school pipeline um, from the 18 year old senior, if you will, make sure they're aware of our industries and our manufacturing and try to make those connections early on um, with the current virtual uh, work model, with well, the current virtual educational model right now in the school district, a lot of seniors have um, very limited classes. And so there's a really great talent pipeline out there that we want to tap into uh, for our manufacturers that they can work maybe a second shift um, and also do a couple of classes that they have in the morning that are virtual or flex. This is all great stuff, Jill. I just have to say, um, especially with, with regard to that grant and of course the training, um, what would you say is the outlook for our manufacturers? I know it's hard with uh, the pandemic and sort of the way things are going, but what would you say as far as growth and expansion opportunities, uh, especially with this grant? I mean, would you say the outlook is, is good? Well, we're, we're, we're hopeful, yeah. I mean, a lot of our manufacturers are doing pretty well. Um, there's certain industries that are stronger than others. Uh, we're trying to um, address all manufacturers' needs right now, whether it's workforce or whether it's an issue where they need to pivot uh, their business model. And so it's really important for us, if you're a manufacturer, if you, you have a need uh, or you, you have a certain skill set or an ability within your workplace and you do need to pivot, um, we want to know about that so that we can try to make those connections and uh, attach those to resources that may be available. Uh, the, the newsletter will be coming out shortly. We'll be sending out a survey. Uh, we'd really love for the manufacturers. It's a, a small brief survey, a couple of questions. Let us know uh, what your needs are and that way we can help best address them and be able to continue to see our manufacturers flourishing in the region. Communication is key, that's for sure. If we don't know, we can't help. Sure. And that's what we're here for. So that's, that's a great point. Um, I am so glad that you joined me, Jill. This is, this is great information. We're gonna, keep this, um, we're gonna keep this archived for anyone to come back to. And we're, we're gonna probably uh, schedule another one of these, uh, Jill, pretty soon. Cause I'm, I'm sure that we're gonna have more information to share probably within the next couple of months. But in the meantime, um, Jill, I will share all of your information on the newsletter, so that way they can get in touch with you. Um, and of course, like I said, keep this archived if they need to refer back to it. But um, we'll put this, um, this information on the grant in the, um, the newsletter as well. So anything else, Jill, that I might be missing? No, thank you so much, Amy. We appreciate the time and the effort and getting the word out to our manufacturers, letting them know help is here. You know, we do have resources for them. Um, we have an array of resources. If it's employment assistance, we're here. If it's uh, the need to pivot, we're here. Um, if there's a new export market they want to uh, attach themselves to, the state is uh, working on virtual uh, models of uh, export assistance to make new connections in that space. So we have a lot of resources. We just need to know every business is different. Uh, so if you have a need, please reach out to us and we're here. We're here to help you. Awesome. Okay. Well, we'll see you for the next Jot This Thank Down with Jill. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a great day. <laughs>